Hey everybody, today is Tuesday, March 10th, 2020. So we're gonna talk about drilling the wings today. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a lot of video. We had the cameras set up, did a lot of filming, and I lost the files. It was just, I don't know, the files are gone. So, but we do have some pictures, and I'm gonna walk through the, some of the steps and really just kind of give an explanation as to what, what do you mean you're drilling the wings? What does that mean? And by the way, I wanna thank the guys at the uh, local EAA Chapter 309 here in Charlotte, uh, John and Alex and Paul and Ken, they all came out and helped. I'm really grateful for those guys taking the time to spend an afternoon out here uh, helping me. I'll tell you, here's the lesson I learned. I should not have used a public parking lot to do this. Not that there was a problem with the parking lot, it's just that we weren't able to fully complete what we set out to do. It would have been nice if the airplane was in a hangar and we could have come back maybe the next day, next afternoon, and finished up what we had started. Unfortunately, those guys had commitments I didn't want to leave it outside all night in a parking lot like that with the wings temporarily attached. The big mistake here was trying to do this in a public parking lot. So what do we mean when we say we're drilling the wings? We're not actually drilling holes in the wings. What we're actually trying to do here today is we're going to temporarily mount the wings to the fuselage. We're matching the angle of incidence on both wings. We want it to be the exact same on either side. Attaching the spars at the root end of the wing to the attachment fittings that are already prefabbed onto the top of the fuselage. The spars are pre-drilled to 3 16ths of an inch and the holes in the attachment fittings on the fuselage are drilled to a quarter of an inch. So if you can imagine we've got a, a rod that runs the entire length of the wing cord through the 3 16th holes in the spars and we push that through the quarter inch holes on the attachment fittings. Now we've got a kind of a loose fitting, but it's, but it's held in place. And at that point, what we're trying to do is match the angle of incidence. So the wing moves a little bit because we've got to play with that 3 16 rod through those quarter inch holes. And once we get the angle of incidence right where we want it, we clamp it in with vice grips through the attachment fittings to hold that in place and then we drill. The front hole has to be drilled to 3 8 which is an AN6. The rear hole needs to be drilled to 5 16 which is an AN5. I was confused early on when I first started reading about drilling the wings that it meant I'm going to have to set the angle of incidence myself. Well, as I started reading and learning more about it, I'm not actually setting the angle of incidence. The angle of incidence is pretty much pre-established on the fuselage itself already. What we're trying to do in this exercise is to match the angle of incidence with each wing so that we're not having one wing off from the other wing. We're just matching the two wings. Today, the wings from the factory, I understand, have already been pre-drilled, so new builders don't have to worry about this particular task. Uh, but we have to do this on this kit, and uh, it's a good learning lesson. The second thing we want to do, once the angle of incidence is established and we've got the holes drilled, now that that is in place, we can now hinge the wings up to set the dihedral. Dihedral on a bear hawk is going to be one degree. Or from the root to the tip, using a water level, we want 2.94 inches. So just shy of three inches from the root to the tip is what that distance is going to be. That's going to get us our one degree. On this past Saturday, we established the dihedral. We just were not able to get the struts drilled and the attachment fittings for the struts to the wings and to the, to the fuselage. We just didn't have enough time. So I think the biggest mistake in this whole process was using a parking lot because if we had been in a hangar, we could have walked away from the project, come back the next day and finished. Unfortunately, the guys had things to do. It was getting dark, it was getting cold. I didn't want to leave the airplane outside in the elements for the night. Didn't know if anybody was gonna come back the next day who could help. So we just had to disassemble everything, uh, put the wings back in storage, and we'll just use this practice attempt at setting the dihedral permanently when we do the final assembly for the wings. Mark Goldberg over at Avapro Aircraft, the manufacturer of the kits, provides this manual uh, for wing assembly and this is part of the steps. These steps are in a narration format. Uh, I took that and put it into step by step. So one, two, three, four. 
it was just easier that way to understand what was coming next. And when we were working with a group of people, I could just simply say, look at number 13 or number nine or whatever, and we knew what to do from there. Mark Goldberg also supplied us with some bushings, a drill guide, uh, some shims, things that we needed for this process. And we really appreciate Mark with that. And it's just a kit that we share with the builders. I sent it back to Mark when I was done with it. I used a small utility trailer and built a wing cradle onto the utility trailer because if you've seen my other videos, you know I'm in a really small, tight garage in, in a condominium and my wings are actually in storage down the road. So uh, this was a really nice tool to have to be able to just bring these wings back and forth. And when I start to do the final wing assembly and the rigging and the wiring and the painting, it's gonna be nice to have this little trailer to run the wings back and forth so I can bring one in at a time. So the status for the build today is that the wings have been temporarily installed. We set the angle of incidence. We set the dihedral. We did not drill the struts. We'll do that later on the final assembly. But really right now, uh, the engine's installed, all the wiring's in, all the ignition system is installed. Right now, the only thing I have left is I'm having a little bit of challenge with the control cables. In one of the earlier videos, I showed you an offset block that I had uh, machined that allows the controls to be at a right angle to the pilot as opposed to the instrument panel at a 30 degree angle and the controls going up and down like this. So now my panel's at a 30 degree angle and my controls are running at a right angle. So that's a more comfortable way to articulate the controls. The prop control took some thinking as to how to run the cable routing for that. It, I got that down pretty much. I had to confirm with Hartzell the clocking for the adjustment arm and the torque setting for the three screws. I sent them pictures and they said everything looked good. Here's a big lesson I learned on ordering cables from Aircraft Spruce. The cables are manufactured by ACS Products Company out of Lake Havasu City, Arizona. And I ordered them through Aircraft Spruce. They give you the choices of 48 inches, 60 inches, different nominal sizes. And they tell you these are custom made. So it's a non-refundable deal. So I had to order a 60 inch cable. That took six weeks to get here. And once it got here, it was too long. I actually called ACS Products directly, told them what my problem was, and they said, send it to us for $15. We'll, we'll shorten the cable to whatever link you want. Contacting the manufacturer directly sometimes is the best route. ACS has been great to work with. They're going to adjust my cable for me. Now I'll have a perfect size cable. Other than that, we're about ready to start painting the cowling and the nose bowl and the boot cow. We'll switch out the fuselage take it down to the storage unit, bring the wings in one at a time and start working on wings here real soon. Thanks guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Go ahead and like and subscribe. Share the video with others. I hope these videos are helpful. Leave me comments on what you think I can do to improve the videos. But uh, thanks guys.